Disgusting. There's stuff everywhere. I hate going in the house. Everything is spiraling out of control. I don't know who did this, but this does not go in a throwaway pile. Where are you going to put all this stuff when you take it back in? I love Ann, but at this point, I can no longer take it. All these stuffed animals are Harley's. She looks spectacular out there in her costume. You know, she might have been a little stiff, and the other girls had better posture up there. God, I don't say about this thing. I'm funny. Can't be that. I can't help it. Why are you tired? Why are you tired? Be happy, happy. Happy, happy, happy. Happy, happy, happy. If you can, you know, merge the two. Yeah, nothing will ever take me away from family. Okay, hold on. Make up, we make up. <sighs> this feels a lot like hell. Hey guys, welcome back to 9 Day Fiancé, Season 8, Episode 17. Yesterday we did Sophie, Kobe, and Patrick, and today we're going to do Michael, Jasmine, Ashley, and Lauren. Let's do Jasmine and Gino first. Okay, so the girls are getting ready for the parade aspect of their pageant. We see a giant bald eagle, and I'm like, yup, that's America. <laughs> So Jasmine tells us that things have been very tense with Gino, but she's like, fuck this shit. I'm gonna only think about the pageant. I have to focus on the pageant because it would be nice if I win the crown. So now it's about to start. Gino's sitting in the crowd. The girls go up and they look stunning. Even the bald eagle lady looks amazing. Then it's Jasmine's turn and I thought that she did all right. <laughs> Like obviously I can't tell whether she did good or not because looking at her walk, it's basic. Gino says that his feelings are still hurt but he doesn't want to make things worse. Then he's like, she looks spectacular even though she was a bit stiff and the other girls have better posture. But I'll just bite my tongue. Oh Gino. <laughs> she looks spectacular out there in her costume. You know, she might have been a little stiff and the other girls had better posture up there. but. I just have to bite my tongue. Okay, so now they start the interview portion. They ask the first girl if she's a giver or a taker, and the girl's like, I'm a giver because I advocate for animals. That's it? And then this one judge is like, oh my gosh, I love that because I personally miss my puppy while I'm here, so I can totally relate to that. And then they all start clapping. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, Jasmine might actually win this if the bar is that low. So now it's Jasmine's turn, and then they asked her what inspired her to do the pageant. Like, what type of obvious question was that? Like, that literally ties to this whole theme that she has going on right now. Anyway, she said that she moved here, and she wanted to find herself, and then she thanked her mom, and that's it. Thank you. So then she's like, when I got there, I immediately saw Gino, and all I could see was everything he was saying. You're walking like a slug, Jasmine. You're not smiling, Jasmine. Look at that posture, Jasmine. Why are you like shaking, Jasmine? Then she's like, ugh, Gino's not helping. But he didn't even say anything. The guy's literally just chilling right now, just watching her. Ugh, you're damn if you do and you're damn if you don't. Now they get back to the hotel, Jasmine asks him how she did, and Gino keeps it nice by saying that she improved on her walk. Then she says that she isn't in the right mood because of everything that they said to each other. And then Gino's like, I've been supporting you fully and I haven't said anything bad, mean, or even called you ugly. Then Jasmine's like, you make me feel ugly. You made me suck. feel ugly. Then she corrects herself by saying that the beauty pageant thing is temporary and she's talking about something long term like their marriage. Then Gino's like, I'm disappointed in everything you're saying and you owe me an apology. I feel like that you owe me an apology for all the things that you said to me and when I have been supporting, what doing nothing I, but supporting what you. What did I say? Then she's like, you gotta remember why I'm here. I have depression, I have alopecia, and I am homesick. And then you reject me as a woman, Gino. And Gino's like, no. And then Jasmine's like, you're causing me a lot of trauma, Gino. So Gino's like, I set up everything and you didn't even want me to come to the rehearsal. And I don't think that's fair to me. And Jasmine's like, you make me doubt myself. You made me doubt myself? and the things that I, that I do, 
And you said it so many times that I start to believe it. And then Jasmine's like, I'm so desperate for your attention. Like it hurts that my husband doesn't make love to me for months. Gino's face looks like he doesn't even care, you guys. Like the dude would rather be anywhere else but there. Like he genuinely looks so fed up with her. I'm very sorry and I apologize for the inconvenience of me not giving up. So Jasmine's like, you have other preferences and deep inside you know exactly what the problem is. And you know, it's like, you get very angry with me and that's a big problem. He tells us that they fight way too much and that it's making him lose any desire that he even has for her. She's like getting uglier to me by the day with all this fighting. And I, oh. So now Jasmine's like, then you shouldn't have brought me here. And then Gino's like, well, I thought things were going to change. And then Jasmine's like, I don't want to stay married to you if we're not going to be intimate. So Gino's like, you're not even trying to fix things. And Jasmine tells him to fix his head. You're, you're not talking about the root cause of the, the problem here. And if you don't see it, we are They fight so that he doesn't want to be intimate with her. So then he starts watching And then Jasmine's like, yeah, you have a addiction. That's why we're not intimate, because you have a addiction. Stop it. Get some help. Okay, that's where this segment ends. Now for Michael and Angela. I did that wrong. It's Angela and Michael. Okay, so Angela gets home, and Michael's waiting like a good boy in the car. She comes in. Everybody's so excited to see her. And it's so funny because she's more excited for her dog than she ever is for Michael. Come here, guys. Come here, guys. Come here, guys. Come here, guys. Anyway, she tells us that she is excited for Michael to come in, but she's more excited to see Skyler's face when he does so. Skyler's face. I cannot wait to say, oh, denied my ass. Look who's coming for dinner. So I just sits down and Skyler's like, you've been there for such a long time. And I'm just like, yeah, but I'll be there as long as possible if it means that he gets his visa. And the kids are even joining in and they're saying that it's not fair that Papa Michael couldn't come. Then I'm just like, yeah, he's very sad that he couldn't come. And Skyler's like, yeah, of course he is. He's been trying to get here for the longest time. And then I'm just like, yes, that's because he loves me and the family. And then Skyler's like, I'm just surprised because of all those gaming updates that you were telling me about. And then I'm just like, well, yeah, you know how a bit irrational I can be. You were sad leaving them all the little updates you were giving me when you was over there. Can I tell you something? <laughs> tell me. We all know I'm crazy. Uh, yeah. And then Skylar's like, well, I don't think it's meant to be. And then I'm just like, I can't wait to prove you wrong. He's going to get that visa. And then it cuts to Michael sitting patiently in the car. So Michael tells us that he's nervous because he doesn't want the kids to be disappointed and he wants them to like him. But he also wants Skylar to be happy once he comes in. So then he gets out and he knocks on the door. But why the hell are the kids opening the door? Anyways, Michael pops in and the kids are screaming with excitement. Oh my God! <laughs> Skylar's also surprised as fuck, but eventually gives him a hug. And it's actually a great family reunion. So great that Angela's even dabbing up. Did, did, did you just dab? Did you just dab? Oh my gosh, she makes it look so cringe. Well, it's cringe in the first place, but still cringier. So Michael is very happy to be here and to also see them again. And the kids are adorable when they're talking about him. So Michael also came in with gifts for everyone. He also gave Skylar a purse, but she says that she likes it in like a high-pitched tone. And you know like that high-pitched tone that somebody uses when they say they like something that they don't? Yeah. Oh! I yeah. like that! Yes, for you. That's for We're giving daddy a hug! Oh, I just love it! No, you don't. And that's okay. So Skylar says that she was surprised to see him, but she won't say anything to kind of ruin the mood. So Angela shows him around the house, and Michael likes that they got a dryer, light switches everywhere, and even two refrigerators. Back home, I do have dryer, a lot of light switches. I mean, I love it. The central AC as well. Oh, that's what he loves, the AC. Yeah. Angela told him that once he gets to Jamaica, he needs to help her with a whole bunch of things, and Michael's ready to be Papa Michael. Then we see Angela's room, and this woman is a hoarder. Oh my goodness. Michael is shocked to see the disarray of her bedroom. Are you serious? And then you see all the stuffed animals over there. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> I'll straighten this up. This ain't much to straighten up, so. This ain't much? 
And then she's asking Michael to help her. Nah, that couldn't be me. Okay, that's where their segment ends. Not for Ashley and Manuel. Don't hate me too much on this segment. I'm also very disappointed in myself. Anyways, Manuel slept on the couch and Ashley is still reasonably upset with Manuel, still talking to the mother of his kids without letting her know. I totally understand him needing to have conversations with the mother of his children, but I don't understand why it needs to be kept secret. I mean, I think it's dickish. So they decide to talk it out. Manuel wants to start off with Jonathan and Ashley's like, forget about Jonathan. Are you still talking to your ex-girlfriend? And Manuel's like, yeah, once a month, but I only talk to her about our kids. And then Ashley's like, why didn't you tell me? Because you're always telling me that you never talk to her because she bothers you. And so Manuel says that it's because that she gets angry easily and he didn't want to anger her. And so because of that, he just rather stayed quiet. And then Manuel finally apologizes and Ashley says, okay. So I'm guessing that she forgave him. Oh, she ain't okay. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't though. Any excuse I can get to dump him, I'm taking it. So then he brings up the money and says that he put the thousand dollars in a bank account to save it for a better life. And now she's like, why the fuck didn't you just tell me that, Manuel? And then he's gonna say that it's cause it bothers him to talk about money, but he's the first one to always bring up money when actually spending her money on whatever she wants to spend it on, you know? Why spend money on that coffee? Why spend money on that cup? Why spending money on these bills? You should be sending it all back to my family know what I mean? But he says that he doesn't like not being able to work because his family needs things back at home, including his mom who's having trouble with her arm. Me siento impotente, no puedo trabajar para ayudar a mi familia. Por ejemplo, mi mamá estaba, está mal con el brazo. Necesita una inyección, tantas cosas. And now she's like, is that why you wanted me to send you $300? And he's like, yeah, but oh my gosh, why didn't you just say that and then Ashley's like they can send the money but he needs to be telling her these things because her mind goes in different directions when he always keeps things to himself and then Manuel puts his head down and it's like he's about to cry and then he says that he doesn't want to share his sadness with her Pero, ¿qué puedo hacer? No, no quiero compartirte mis tristeza, no quiero compartirte todo lo que realmente siento en mi corazón porque no quiero sentir, hacerte sentir mal a ti no quiero eso you guys is this a manipulation tactic because I feel like it's working. Uh, That's what I was talking about at the beginning. Because why do I feel bad? Uh, no damn well he's still a bitch. So now as she's crying. And then she tells him to just tell her what he's feeling. And what's going on with his family. So then they hold hands. And he's like you have no idea how much I miss my family. My kids. And I'm not there for them. And that just hurts me. Flips bangs. And then as she's like I will help any way I can. And then Morel just stops crying. Like yeah. Mission accomplished. Anyways, he says that he'll do better in telling her things and then they make up. Okay, last and always least, Alexi and Lauren. Okay, this one made me very disappointed in, you know who, at the very end. Okay, so Lauren and Alexi are still arguing about the whole job thing. Alexi is upset because he cannot fathom that Lauren expects him to do more when he's already breaking already. So Lauren's like, other moms work, take care of the children and the house and the husband. And then Alexi is like, well, I hope you can. I hope want you, you can. to support that I and see. I, I can, I will. I hope, because I'm telling you, that's not what's important for me. Like, it's crazy that he's not even offering to even take some of the load off her back, knowing how much he does, you know? And then Lauren is like, come on, be my cheerleader. And then Lexi is just over it. He says that no man who respects himself would ever be his wife's cheerleader. He said that it should be the other way around. So then Lauren tries to explain that it's just a support thing. And then Lexi is like, I already supported you, and you want me to support you again? Um, hello? Are we ever supposed to stop supporting our spouse? That doesn't make any sense. But to be your wife's cheerleader doesn't make you less of a man. It's not like a negative term or anything. Anyways, nothing gets solved in that conversation. Now they're sitting down again to talk again. Kill me now! Alexis says that he wants to explain his side better. And so he basically says that he does want to be her cheerleader and he does want to support her. But when she said that he wasn't support her, he felt mad because he's been supporting her this whole entire time throughout her surgery. Lauren says that she gets where he's coming from. So then she says that she just wants him to support her when she does her career. And then he says that he will, but he just hopes that she will know how to manage everything. You do a lot with, with the kids and with, with family and with the ho home. I need that. Of course I'll support you. If you can, you know, merge the two. Yeah, nothing will ever take me away from family. And you know, this part really confused me because does that mean that they just agreed to her working and also taking care of everything in the household at the same time? Really? 
anyways they made up after that shit because i guess it's easy to make up after you know that not only will your wife bring in money but she will also continue to take care of the house and the children oh my gosh she's so dumb anyways that's the end of this video let me know some of your thoughts in the comments below please like share comment and subscribe bye